Georgia. Let me say that it is a great honor to follow Jay Rockefeller. It is true that when you own your own bank, you never bounce your checks. <laughs> but I like being with Jay. He is the one limousine liberal who's honest about the limousine. And we were at the Braves game together on Saturday, and it's true that Jane Fonda has come south, has decided to acquire a whole series of new skills, now does this, which is slightly strange by Georgia standards, but we admire anybody who's trying. <laughs> Jay was in the box with us. An exciting Saturday afternoon in Atlanta. The Braves and the Pirates. Weich Fowler was there. Ted Turner. A lot of us. Blue jeans, slacks, and then Jay. <laughs> Three-piece suit, tie, and four valets to chop for him so that he wouldn't get too tired by the exercise. <laughs> it's an honor to be here with Mark Shields and Pat Buchanan. Shields and Buchanan are essentially perfect for this kind of a roast because they're basically twins. They're soulmates in life. They're classics. They represent the tuxedo-wearing charity roast inside the Beltway working class. <laughs> Reagan only seemed like an actor compared to these two. They have made a fabulous living with great incomes out of the equivalent of professional wrestling. <laughs> On the left, the bouncing Bostonian. On the right, the Georgetown giant. The next time you watch them on a television show, turn down the sound and just watch the body language. And you are watching an art form as carefully orchestrated as any professional championship wrestling match in any county fair in America. <laughs> Two professionals so good, they make Reagan look purely as an amateur. But I had to come tonight because Pat, in many ways, gave me a start in this town. When I first came here as a freshman, there was a wonderful radio show, Drive Time, Braden and Buchanan. And as often happened in that period, it was Braden and Blank, because Buchanan was <laughs> Pat once wrote a scathing column about those of us who voted for a pay raise equivalent to his agent's fee. <laughs> And I simply want to report here that everything I learned about fighting for salary, I learned by listening to the management of that radio station as they begged, pleaded, and cajoled with Pat to come back, offering even to pay him cash if he would show up. <laughs> Crossfire, you know, is essentially the Nixonian tradition carried to television. You remember the old days of television? Some of you are old enough. Remember what television talk shows used to be like? Slow, genteel, complete sentences. <laughs> people allowed occasion to have an entire paragraph and then Pat brought all of the skills that Nixon had taught him and he went on TV and it was unbelievable he brought the equivalent of LA street games to CNN <laughs> nothing was too vicious nothing was too tough but he brought it with a panache that's amazing consider his career he's a study in Hutzpah Born in the District of Columbia, high school in the District of Columbia, college in the District of Columbia, the Nixon White House, District of Columbia Media, the Reagan White House, District of Columbia Media. And then he sees Orrin and me and he says, what you guys don't understand is that beyond the beltway. <laughs> but Buchanan has had no difficulty shifting back and forth between the news media and public service in the White House. He applies the same careful, thorough disregard for facts in the White House that he has on television. You remember some of his better defenses. On Bitburg, it was an allied cemetery because the Germans are our allies. <laughs> on astrology in the White House, what's wrong with a serious NASA project examining the stars in historic perspective? On Iran-Contra, Ayatollah, Sandinista, Mossad, El Sendero Luminosa. If you've heard about one foreign connection, you've heard about them all. What's the big deal? 
you know, I saw the CNN tape just now, and it occurred to me, they don't seem to understand why Pat hasn't run for president. Now, I don't want to come here tonight and make any allegations. I don't want to suggest anything we can't prove. But I will string together a series of possible connections for you to think about. I do know that he was tempted to campaign in 1987 until Gary Hart and the Miami Herald had a fateful moment. I do know that he began to plan again early in 1991 until rumors about a certain Virginia senator and Playboy magazine and other things came out. I do know that he'd gathered advisors on the rebound from that event when suddenly word came in from Palm Beach about a shocking event. I am aware that Thursday a week ago, the Buchanan team had gathered again and understood suddenly, according to Telex, that there was something coming out of Oklahoma City that resembled one of the problems they hadn't solved yet. I'm not prepared to say decisively tonight that Buchanan's reluctance to run is because his concerns of sexual secrets in his background. On the other hand, I am not prepared to say here tonight that it is not because of those things. And in that tradition of congressional inquiry, I want to thank you for allowing me to be here.